Hey, good morning. This is Ben here with Studio on the Lake once again. This one's a uh, loon, two parts. This is the big loon that I normally make. Starts out with uh, this this head that I'm using this time is a different, a little different pattern from my normal one. You get tired of carving the same pattern over and over again, so I thought we'd give this one a try. And uh, the loon is almost finished. Uh, you won't get to see all of that because this, this part primarily deals with just shaping the head out. Uh, the second video will go ahead and do the rest of the loon. But I'm pretty happy with the way it's coming out. As always, starts with a pattern. You can see that piece of basswood is not the best. And I probably should have cut another piece, but I was too lazy. There's a crack in there, and I'm trying to figure out how to get that pattern to sit on there and not be involved in the crack and I just decided to shorten the head a little bit that portion there gets set down into the body so it's not really going to make a difference you can see a little bit of a softer pith in the bottom portion of that basswood block but this thing gets painted and uh, shouldn't make any difference whatsoever. Poof, just like that, over to the bandsaw, head's cut out. As you can see, I, I work with stock that's not dimensional. So everything goes in the center. As always, center line for a reference. And reference being used loosely, you'll see a little bit later on where I went off the center line and then uh, just to get the dimensions correct and went ahead and redrew those center lines in there. But for right now, you got a reference to that. This is drawing out the, the outer portion of the shape. You'll see some pretty involved stuff if you get into different videos. Uh, people cutting the side view off, the top view off, putting it back, taping it back together, gluing it. Uh, tacking it to get a square piece to work I don't do that uh, take it over there and rough it out there's the head a little more shaping a little rough around the side starting to look like it's supposed to look that is a loon I don't have a loon reference in front of me for this the, in a lot of cases what looks good in a photograph won't look good uh, if you carved it exactly to the dimensions of the photograph something about seeing the live bird takes your eye away from various different details where if you carve it exactly like that uh, it doesn't quite look right so make believe make it look like it's supposed to, or read, I guess is a better word. Cuts all a bit. Redraw on the center lines. This is kind of a side reference, it's getting drawn in now. Getting a, a flow. I'm going to leave those red lines as the, the higher portion of the carving. Everything will get carved away to those lines. And then once it starts to take shape, they may disappear and, and the high spots will be taken away. Back to a power carver. If this is the first time that you've watched any of my videos, I run uh, two of these from PGL Enterprises out of Minnesota. An older one that's about 20 plus years old and then one that's a year or two old. Uh, 
uh, put two different size bits on there, an eighth inch and uh, heck, I don't know, three sixteenths. I don't remember what the other one is. Obviously speed it up. I'm not quite that fast. If you look really closely there, you can see me hyperventilating in the background. When you speed up a video and you're breathing, it uh, often is not a pretty sight. It, Taking shape pretty nice, getting ready to put the eye in. This you may or may not find interesting. I This is a case where I went right back to the pattern, um, quickly poked a hole in the middle of that eye, which works great for the wood. I'm gonna carve that center part out anyway. Went through all that trouble to line that up, and you'll see in a few minutes here, after I got those all drawn in, I didn't like where they looked. Didn't like the placement of them and the way it looked, so I ground them off and changed them, moved them a little bit. Probably the hardest part about carving a decoy head is uh, getting the eyes centered so they look correct from above and from the front if you look at both eyes. Many of my early carvings and some of them uh, to this date have uh, whopper jawed eyes, one sticking up in the corner. <coughs> but you're not supposed to look at the loon that way anyway. You're supposed to only see one side of it. There's always one side that's better as a silhouette than the other side. Those are the reference lines, uh, attempting to get those uh, relatively centered. You can see I'm redrawing that one up a little bit higher. Then I'll stare at it for a little bit. There's my box of eyes. Looking for a size that'll work in there. Uh, I think those are 14 millimeters that I'm playing around with. My initial thought was those were a little bit too big. And in the bottom I found probably a 12 millimeter. A couple of them sitting there. Uh, all my glass eyes come from Tohican glass eyes. They're uh, not pricey, but they're not cheap either. I, I think those are probably four to six bucks for a set of, of the glass eyes. And they come in various different shades and different sizes. I try to keep a bunch of them on hand. That's uh, the smaller one that I went with. Looking at it, uh, didn't like the placement of the eye and then I decided that the head was a uh, not quite ready to get the eye because it was a little fat around the eye socket there so combining those two things not liking where the eye was at and the head not quite being ready it's difficult to uh, carve around the eye and not nick it so it has to be relatively down to the, to the right shape and the right size. And looking at that little eye again and uh, coming to the conclusion that I don't, I don't like it. It's too small. See, I didn't go back to the pattern on that. Although 
skipping ahead a little bit, I, I did redraw a couple of reference lines. Now I just make the socket a little bit bigger than the eye. You'll notice on some of the, if you go back in the videos, the, the dragon videos, I'll, I'll undercut the eye. They're all set with that quick wood epoxy. It's two-part epoxy. It's great stuff. I keep a couple of those on hand. You can actually fix a carving that's broken or portions of it that are missing with this stuff, but you do have to paint it. It says it will take stain and on a, a piece of wood that's not painted but stained, and uh, I don't find that to be true. It, you can still see it in the stain, so but painted, it works out, seems to work out pretty well. Doesn't shrink over time. I go ahead and fill the eyes, and you see that little ball there? That's what's left over. I set that up on the bench there, and it takes about five, ten, probably ten minutes for this stuff to set. I'm not doing it in this video here, but I, I carve the back end of my knives off uh, with kind of a flat spot, and I use that to push the eyes in, and then I'll go ahead and take off the putty or epoxy with the blade and then wipe the blade off. You can see I'm using one of the older knives for that, although you can sharpen that off there. Now the last thing I do, you see I'm going around that eye and kind of building a little bit of an eyelid in there. That saves me having to carve that stuff later on. And I'm going with the flow of where I'm going to draw the feather lines in. And you do that while it's still uh, not set. And later on, a lot of times I'll come back with a little bit uh, really fine and put a little bit more of an eyelid on there. You can do this with the carving on the wood, but you have to be pretty meticulous about it. I'm too lazy to do that since this is going to be painted. But there you have it. There's the eye. Or eyes, plural. Kind of looks like a loon. Pretty happy with the shape of it there. Initially, I'll go back to the power carving, but uh, I switch back and forth. This is a bench knife. Give it a few strops because you're going to do some fine, fine shaving around the the eye and the head there. Further define the shape of it. Of note, the the grain in this. For those of you that are new to carving, is going through the beak. It's going from left to right there in that picture. And it, if you whack it on the top of the beak, it won't break off. Now, if the grain were to go vertical from the bottom of the neck to the top of the head, the beak, of course, first time you tapped it or bumped it, there, it would crack to probably and break right off. These don't seem to have that problem. The only problem these loons have is uh, our cat chewing on them. For some reason, it's a good scratching post, and it's fun to chew on the tip of the beak. I have the original loon I carved many years ago, and the end of his beak's all chewed up from a cat or maybe one or two cats. The uh, title of the video kind of says that this is this is my signature loon. Uh, I really like doing these, and I've done quite a few of them. There's a kind of a funny story that happened, I think, last year. A relative who shall remain nameless uh, was sitting at the house here one day and was holding one of the loons in their lap for quite a while while we were drinking coffee and talking and then they said uh, hey I'll, uh, I'd like to pay you to carve one of these loons to give to another relative of theirs 
and I said I'll be, I'll be happy to do that but I'm not going to charge you for it and a couple months went by and I had a hadn't got around to carving that particular one but I think I had three or four loons uh, that I was selling and uh, one of them didn't get sold so we were going out to dinner and I threw it in the car and I thought I'll give that to that relative and they can give it to their relative so while we were at dinner I said hey I got something in the car and we went outside and handed it to him because both the parties the one give given the loon and get the loon were there and they loved it and they took it and put it in their car and hit it <coughs> so a couple of months went by and we were down at their cabin and the loon was sitting on a table in the centerpiece in the room and I laughed and said you didn't give that loon away yet and they kind of smiled sheepishly and said yeah we haven't got around to that yet gonna do it though so a couple more months went by I thought well I'll just carve another loon they obviously like that one so I carved a second one uh, and took that and gave it to them and said now you have two of them you can pick which one you like better than the other one and then you got one to keep and one to give away long story short went by a couple more months went by we went back to the cabin and now there were two loons prominently displayed in various different spots and I said you haven't given the loon away and they said yeah we can't decide which one we like better So I ended up carving a third loon and giving it to him, and that loon finally made it where it's supposed to go. Setting the beak in there. Uh, this will be changed a little bit later on. I came pretty close to uh, throwing this part away here because I didn't like the way the... this is. At several points on this this thing it, it can get messed up and then it becomes firewood although it's not a very good piece of firewood but you can throw it in the fire and start all over again you can actually even take those eyes out if you need to there's no sense in wasting the eyes they, they will you can carve them out of there without breaking them uh, this is not the side that I wasn't happy with it's the back side and I'll show you as the in the second video when I'm finishing up the head and doing the body I'll, I'll explain if I remember uh, where I was unhappy with that that particular part of the head I messed up kinda I thought I messed up where the beak came down into the feathers on the loon and that's that portion right in there but it was I was able to save it that's a diamond bit it's not real aggressive relatively smooth it keeps you from taking stuff away sometimes it's easier just to switch back to a knife doesn't show in the video but this, this is where I started to decide I didn't particularly like that one side and the way it was going there's still quite a lot of meat left on the on the beak there in fact in this video I won't carve the beak down too much uh, the finishing will be done later on best best way to do this is take your time uh, if you're carving in the round like this go ahead and work on one section turn it around work on another section kind of like if you're if you have ever done any painting you don't you don't typically finish one section of it at one time you work kind of all over the place and it ends up being well rounded when you're done
it's kind of a nice view of him. He's got a little smile going down there. That red line will eventually get uh, burned in and then uh, stoned lightly. And I, I do try, if you watch some of the other videos on, on the decoys or various different birds, I do try to leave a little bit of a smile in there. You, you won't see that in nature, but it, it kind of reads nicely when you're staring over there at a decoy if it's got a little bit of a smile. You can see I'm just taking off really small uh, shavings on that. These videos are starting to run a little bit longer, but that's a comment of uh, people wanting to see a little bit more of the carving process. So this one, but I, I don't like to run over into an hour. I don't think people have an hour to stare at this kind of stuff. This one's just short of 30 minutes. And that's probably too long too. If I had my preference, it would be 10 minutes. That's the way that I watch a lot of these videos. That could just be me. But when I was cutting those down, I got comments that they were too short and people weren't learning how to do this. Because I did claim, or do claim that they, they are kind of a teaching video. If you're looking for that sort of thing. There's an example of, of what I was talking about, turning it around and around and working on one section and then stopping and turning it some more and work on another section. That helps keep it in the round. Well, that's going to wrap up the, the first part. I'm not going to do the stoning or any of the burning. You can see the silhouette of that. It's uh, turning out pretty nice. Here's a uh, little preview of where we're going with the next video and uh, actually that's as far as I've gotten on this thing but you can see the body is attached uh, the head is stone hey thanks for watching this has been with studio on the lake to see the second part go ahead and subscribe we're right at 200 subscribers now and that's pretty good I think so for part two on the finished loon like subscribe and comment as always thanks for watching